West Bromwich Albion, the Baggies, they are currently entrenched in the Premier League relegation battle. Things are honestly looking quite bleak for the Baggies. They find themselves deep in the relegation zone alongside Sheffield United and Fulham at the time of recording, but it's looking pretty likely that West Brom and Sheffield United are already dead and buried. We're going to do what Big Sam was unable to do this season, keep West Brom in the Premier League, but also we're going to give them the Mr. Rebuild treatment as we look to make West Bromwich Albion champions of Europe. Lads, just wanted to say a big thank you for 375,000 subscribers on the channel. We are on the grind towards 400,000 subscribers. So if you're new around here, bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below and help us get there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. Fellas, I'd like to say a big thank you to Displate for sponsoring today's video. I'm pretty happy to be working with Displate for the pure fact that I've been using their products for a few years. A few years ago, I moved out of my family home and moved in by myself. And I've actually used this plate to decorate my apartment. The quality of these disc plates are unreal. It's virtually wall art that is printed onto a metal sheet. Each disc plate is printed on demand and is signed by a master of production. They're bloody easy to install as well. I reckon it takes me maybe two, three minutes to install each installation. And there is so much variety. Over 1.4 million designs to choose from. No matter what you're into, whether it's sport, whether it's movies, history, comics, nature, anything, there is a display for you. In fact, let me stop babbling on. Let me go and show you my display collection. So in the living room, we have a little bit of a film theme going on. I'm a huge movie lover. I've got a bloody whole sleeve of tattoos dedicated to movies, but a Pulp Fiction and a La La Land piece in the living room, as well as this Clint Eastwood piece. You might've seen it on my Instagram but I absolutely love this one. It's like the centerpiece of my apartment. And then as we move into my bedroom, this is where I've upgraded a lot recently. Got a big old Travis Scott piece there, one of my favorite artists. Behind the bed, we've got the Footballing Hall of Fame, Sadorf, a gun, Virgil van Dijk piece, and Luka Modric there. Love these pieces. And then to round out the collection, we've got my favorite basketballer of all time, Kevin Garnett, next to an awesome piece of Vince Carter, Vince Sanity. I love this collection. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with my display collection that I have going on. If you guys want to go and purchase some displays for yourself, make sure you go and use the link that I have in the description. Get yourself a nice discount. Also, if you want to, if you need any more reason to buy a display installation, Every single display sold equals one tree planted. So you're helping the environment as well. So fellas, a big thank you to display for sponsoring today's video. Let's get right back into today's video. So this is the starting 11 we have been given to start off season number one with West Brom. And if I'm being totally blunt, it's clear to me why West Brom are in the issue they are, why they're in the position they are. This is a pretty piss poor side in terms of trying to survive in the Premier League. A few players that give us hope, uh, likes of Grant and Dion Garner, and even Maitland-Niles, even though he's only on loan. Pereira as well is decent, but a very aging roster. Snodgrass, Ivanovic, they're getting on in age. There's not too many upsides with this side, so we're going to have to do... A fair bit of work, I would say, here in season number one. Probably going to look for a new striker. Might even go for a new center back. Time will tell. Let's just jump into the transfer window. So the first piece of business we're going to do here in season number one is a player departure. Kyle Bartley out of the club and off to Hertha Berlin for just under £2 million. We have decided to make our first upgrade at the left back position. Jamal Lewis is coming from Newcastle to West Brom here, traveling down for 13 0.7 million pounds. Rico Richards actually has half decent potential, so we have 
decided to loan the young Englishman out to Bristol City. Only 16 years of age, 54 overall. But I'm interested to see what we can do with him here at our time at West Brom. I've also decided to sell Kieran Gibbs, the former Arsenal man. Wait, is that Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain? I don't know. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. I think we sold Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain to start Renee. And we have made a marquee signing up top as we have signed the Turkish striker Enes Unal from uh, Getafe or Getafe in the uh, La Liga, in La Liga for 13 million pounds. Very hopeful that this guy can turn into an absolute weapon for us. Speaking of Getafe, we've sent a player there. Matt Phillips, the Scotsman, headed there for 4.25 mil. And Jake Livermore out of the club and off to Leeds United on a permanent deal. Hal robson Kanu, the Welsh striker, the absolute beast at the Euros a few years ago, is off to Freiburg. And that's how we're going to conclude the opening transfer window in charge of West Bromwich Albion. Jamal Lewis, Enes Unal into the club. Two big additions to the side at the striker and left back position. But it's all about making sure we can survive relegation here in season one. And I mean, this is how the squad is looking after that window. It's kind of annoying. I mean, Ivanovic and Stodgrass, I know they're old, but within a month, they've already gone down from 77 to 76 overall. So I hope that is not a trend. Relegation battle? Who said there was a bloody relegation battle on the cards? We are currently in 10th position on the 1st of January, 21 games into this Premier League season, 28 points. I mean, we are nowhere near home and hose at the moment. We're not safe at the moment, but that is an absolutely belter way to start off season one. Good signs so far. 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven in our record. You love to see it. Ainsley Maitland-Niles, his loan deal did end in this January transfer window. And I was looking for a replacement that we could get in permanently. And then I realized Maitland-Niles fits exactly into what we want. We've already just started to get a little bit of potential with him, like dynamic player potential. So we have decided to sign Ainsley Maitland-Niles on a permanent deal. 20.9 million pounds from Arsenal, which is an absolute steal. But yeah, Maitland-Niles, the only permanent deal into the club in this transfer window. Very hopeful that he can turn into a beast. We've already got him in a decent position. Zaha signing with, uh, with uh, Everton as well. But anyways, lads, got to focus on ourselves. Let's not have a slip here in the second half of the season. Survive relegation and prosper at West Brom, please. How bloody good is that? Let's go. We have survived the Premier League relegation battle and have finished 11th in the Premier League here. 48 points. West Brom would only dream of having this happen in real life. That is absolutely incredible. We've really had the big Sam effect or the Mr. Rebuild effect in this season one. I'm stoked with that. And if you think FIFA couldn't get any more unrealistic, Jose Mourinho has done an absolute masterclass here and has won Tottenham a Premier League title. And at the other end of the table, it is Sheffield United, Brighton and Leeds United all relegated. I mean, we honestly weren't that far off the relegation zone. Only, what, 11 points off? What is going on at Tottenham? They have taken down Arsenal in a North London derby to win the FA Cup. And Wolves have won the Carabao Cup here in season one. Jesus. Man City have absolutely destroyed Real Madrid here to win the Champions League. And it is Real Sociedad absolutely destroying Nîmes Olympic to win the Europa League. So some weird things happening in season one, but we have done our job. We have survived relegation in season one comfortably as well. Need to build upon that for season two and see what we can make the future look like here with the baggies. All right, lads, season two, kicking off here at West Brom. Hagazi has come back from his loan spell and we have decided to sell him immediately as he is off to FC Lorient for 2.35 million pounds. Kyle Edwards, he has okay potential, so I wanna try getting it up there and getting some overall stats into him before we eventually tr potentially try to sell him, but we've sent Kyle Edwards to FC Porto on loan. Rico Richards already going from a 54 to a 61. Now that's a good start. We're gonna send him out on loan again 
and see if we can get similar growth. And our first signing of season number two is to upgrade the right-hand side of our midfield as we assign Ritsu Doan, the Japanese midfielder, coming across here from PSV Eindhoven for 17.8 million pounds. Yokozu was only here on a loan in our defensive midfield slash standard midfield role, so we have had to make an upgrade and a permanent signing. Sean Longstaff, coming down from Newcastle United for 10.8 million pounds. As soon as I press the accept offer button on him, his valuation has just gone up significantly, which I ain't complaining about. Also gonna send Callum Morton out on a season long loan once again. And another one of our aging midfielders headed to Leeds United as Romain Sawyers is signing for Leeds for just over three million pounds. I remember Back, I'm pretty sure I used to play for Walsall back in the day because in FIFA 14, I think it was, I did a Road to Glory save with Walsall. And this guy was an absolute beast. So a little bit of a callback there. Maybe one or two of you might remember that. And a permanent upgrade in the defense as well to replace Branislav Ivanovic. It is going to be Ben Godfrey joining us here from Everton for 13.1 million. Charlie Austin was out on loan at QPR, I believe it was last season, but we have sent him on a permanent deal to Swansea City. We are not messing around to kick off the transfer window here in season and two lads some big business in and some big business out but we have made some huge upgrades to the squad and i'm very excited to see if we can match or even eclipse what we did last season little update on how the squad is looking as well for you lads it's a very balanced side at the moment which i'm happy about Pereira getting up to a 79. I just really want to make sure that we don't slip into a second season syndrome and take the, take the, take the foot off the gas, really. If we can get mid-table again, I'll be a happy man. This side is decent. Let's see what we can do here in season two. Oh, I think I've spoken it into existence and put the absolute mocker on us, lads. Halfway through the season... We are in the relegation battle. Luckily though, the silver lining, we are eight points clear of Burnley and Blackburn, which is nice to see, but still, need to get our act together here in the second half of the season, pick things up and get up the table again. So gonna try making some business happen here. Darnell Furlong is out of the club and is headed to Leeds United for 4.25 million pounds. And Semi Ajayi, the Nigerian defender, headed to Newcastle United for 4.85 million pounds. Annoying though. I signed, like, I signed a few players and as soon as I sign them, their valuation goes up. The same thing has happened here with Semi. He's some 4.85. As soon as we sell him, he goes up to 6 mil, which is annoying. And the clean out continues as Connor Tens Townsend is headed to President's Eleven in Turkey. Oh, the deals keep coming and they won't stop coming. Kenneth Zahor headed to FC Midland for 1.9 mil. And we have finally made a signing here. We've been trying to get every penny rubbed together, but we have brought in Ezri Konsa from Aston Villa, 17.8 million pounds for the Englishman. Very interested to see what we can do with him over the cross of over the course of the series. Bit of a controversial one though. Aston Villa fans would not be happy given it's another Midlands club. But there we go, lads. Ezri Konsa into the club. Furlong, Townsend, Ajayi, and Zahor all out of the club. Hopefully that big upgrade can help us survive the relegation battle here in season two. Get in there, fellas. We are staying up at West Bromwich Albion quite comfortably as well. 17 points clear of the relegation zone. It wasn't really a relegation battle at all this season for the most part because Blackburn, Burnley and Swansea have gone back down to the championship with an absolute whimper. Yes, you're seeing this correctly. Tottenham have just gone back to back as Premier League champions. My word. They almost went back to back in the FA Cup as well. What is going on with Tottenham? They lost the FA Cup final to Chelsea though. Liverpool have won the Carabao Cup. Bayern Munich have won the Champions League. And it is Barcelona absolutely destroying Lyon to win the Europa League. A pretty up and down season for us, but very encouraging signs there. Carlin Grant, 21 goals on the board for him. That's a very impressive season. But lads, that is season two done and dusted. A little bit of second season syndrome, but overall, I'm happy with the progress. We're putting a decent side together, but now we need to start thinking, okay, our aspiration needs to start being top 10 finishes consistently. So let's see if we can make that dream a reality here in season three. 
Going to kick off season number three here, lads. Sam Johnson, his growth has been okay, but to get 16 million pounds for him is pretty decent. And at least we sell him, get some cash holder in the back pocket, and it gives us a chance to go out there and get a goalkeeper that we can develop over hopefully the course of the rebuild. Once again, Callum Morton for the third successive season has been loaned out. This time it's to AZ Alkmaar. And Finn Azaz is also headed out on loan. He's headed to Genoa in Serie A. And there it is, lads. We have made our marquee goalkeeper signing. It is Unai Simon, the Spanish goalkeeper. Joining us from Athletic Bilbao for what I'm assuming is a club record transfer. 50.4 million pounds to bring the Spaniard into the club. 84 rated, 25 years of age. That is a huge, huge picker. And in an even bigger piece of business, Rakeem Harper has been sent on loan. <laughs> Josh Griffiths also sent out on loan to Anderlecht. So there we go, lads. A transfer window focused on goalkeepers and loan movements, but there is no denying that Unai Simon coming in and Sam Johnson leaving is a massive, massive upgrade to our starting 11. And here is said starting 11. The lads, the thing I love the most in a rebuild is when a starting 11 grows together. And for the most part, that's happening. Majority of the players in that 78 to 81 range, of course, Simon and Maitland Niles streaking a little bit ahead, but I'm very happy with how that is all going. Richard's up to a 65 as well, which is quite nice, but we just got to keep getting things moving here with this West Brom side. I said that our aspirations needed to be a top half finish this season. I mean, we're not dead and buried in that regard, but we currently find ourselves in 14th position, 12 points out of the relegation zone. So that is an improvement on last season. But in the grand scheme of things, we need to start picking it up. We have decided to make our first free agent signing here. Stumbled across this guy here, Dauda Karamoko Sangare, an Ivory Coast winger, 17 years of age, 64 overall. Could be like the regen of like Javinho or something, but looks a decent little prospect. So we'll sign him and see what we can do. We're also going to send Sam Field out on a season long loan or a six month loan to Freiburg. So there we go, lads. Not as much business as I hoped to do. Was hoping we would find somebody beastly in the free agents like we had with Messi when we were at Torino, but it is what it is. Few decent free agents in Sam Field out on loan. Let's crack on and see if the lads can keep on pushing up that Premier League table. All right. I'm putting this down as a foundational year. I'm putting this down as just building up a squad. Little disappointed with our finishing on the table of 14th, but we weren't even close to the relegation zone as Fulham, Watford, and Nottingham Forest are headed down. But obviously, we didn't get to our dreams. We didn't get to our goals. Tottenham, however, were unable to hit that three-peat. It's Manchester City winning the Premier League. We lost! The FA Cup final, lads. We lost to Everton on penalties. We could have been playing Europa League football next season, but we have lost the FA Cup final on penalties. That sucks. And it is Manchester City emerging as Carabao Cup winners. Man City also have won the Champions League again. And it is Borussia Mönchengladbach taking down Feyenoord to win the Europa League. If we were able to win the FA Cup, that would have been a major silver lining on the season. But unfortunately, we're finished in a pretty mediocre 14th position here with West Bromwich Albion. We need to kick things into gear in season four, need to start building up this squad even more, need to make some more marquee signings. We need more success. Sending Rakeem Harper out on loan once again, Leicester City is the Englishman's latest destination. And it is another loan move here for Rico Richards. I wanna get him into the 70s, lads. 67 overall at age 19, a little bit of a side project here, but he's out on loan once again. And it is a big, Money move here, a controversial one, but we have decided to sell Matthias Pereira to Liverpool for 53.5 million pounds. I'm very happy we got that much money for the Brazilian. Is he going to be Roberto Firmino 2.0? I certainly hope not, but we have got a lot of money to play around with now. What an upgrade, lads. We are showing our signal of intent to push ourselves up the table. James Madison is joining us here. We've signed the Englishman for 67 million pounds from Leicester City. James Madison, welcome to the Hawthorns. Welcome. 
to West Bromwich Albion. Also trying to bolster these squad numbers as well. So Jairo Mata Arnaiz, a Spanish defender, 68 overall. Looks pretty gun joining us on a free. Gary Mahon or Gary Mon. Gary, Gary Mon. Gary Mon is joining us. The right back from Ireland, 71 overall, Gary Mon. More like he should be from Jamaica, but Gary Mon joining us on a free. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes, I'm a dickhead. And our final free agent signing, Unai Areso Blanco, another Spaniard into the club. Another player on a free joining us here. The good thing about this window is we got somebody huge like Madison in, who's what, a plus four or three or four overall upgrade on Pereira. And we've still got a little bit of money to work with in January if needs be. So I'm excited to see what we can do in this fourth season. I'm excited to see if the squad can progress. And most importantly, I'm excited to see if we can finally get some momentum and some movement with this squad. I mean, this is how the starting 11 is now looking. Carlin Grant is developing quite nicely here, up to an 84 overall. Maitland Niles up to an 84. Few players need to kick their growth off a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with the starting 11 at the moment. And I am very happy with this movement up the table. Let's go, lads. Finally, it feels like we're out of the trenches and we are into the glory days because we currently find ourselves sitting fifth in the Premier League. It is an extremely tight table. We could be playing Champions League football next year. We could be playing Europa League football next year. Or we could easily end up mid-table and have nothing to our side. So, really going to have to keep the gas going in the last 17 games of this Premier League season. Going to look to continue the growth here in the January transfer window, however. Callum Morton is off to Borussia Mönchengladbach on loan for the season. Unfortunately, lads, Unai Simon has taken an injury and it's going to be out for the next three months. So, whereas my initial plan was to sell somebody in the starting 11 and invest in a big name player, our plans are going to have to take a step back as we needed somebody to cover. And we have signed Neslier here on deadline day, overpaid for sure. But I had to do it, otherwise, we're going to be up shit creek without a paddle. Meslier joining us for 46.4 million pounds from Leeds. So yeah, lads, a little bit more frustrating of a window than I expected. That Unai Simon injury really has hurt our progress. Meslier into the side though, hopefully he can provide some cover, but I was hoping for a big name player in this window. Get in there, lads! We have some Champions League football coming to the Hawthorns in season number five, as we have finished second in the Premier League title race. Liverpool just wiping the floor with everybody else, but we finished second in the Premier League this season. I am over the moon with that. From 14th to second, you love to see it. And in the relegation zone, it is Sheffield United, Burnley, and the Brentford Red Boys going down. We've won some silverware. Come on, the baggies. Let's go, baby. We have won the FA Cup, finally. We get the FA Cup to the Hawthorns, taking down Arsenal on penalties. Chelsea have won the Carabao Cup. Tottenham have won the Champions League, fair enough. And it is PSG taking down Valencia to emerge as Europa League champions. Carlin Grant is going off. He is absolutely going off. 32 goals and 12 assists, up to an 87 overall. I knew this guy had okay potential, but did I expect him to get to the stage he has? God no, 87 rated, insane. Also, fair play to Dolan, 18 goals and 16 assists for him. The lads are killing it. But lads, that is season four done and dusted. Champions League football coming to the Hawthorns next season. Let's go. Lads, we are not messing around here in season five. We're in the Champions League and I want to make some noise. West Brom boys, make some noise. Steven Bergevin, the Dutch midfielder, joining us here from Tottenham for 100, or sorry, Athletic Madrid, I should say, for 116.2 million pounds. Little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Grady Dion Ghana has decent potential in career mode this year, but he just, was, just wasn't getting it done for us, honestly, and he wanted to move away from the club, so we sold Grady Dion Ghana for 26.8 million pounds to Atalanta, type of guy that I thought I'd be able to sell for like 100 million pounds when I started the save. But it is what it is. Not everything in life can be a dub. Sometimes, sometimes you got to cop the L's 
and just roll with it. I've also decided to send Finn Azaz on another loan move. This time it is to Sheffield United. And Josh Griffiths, another loan move for the young English goalkeeper off to Frankfurt. We've actually somehow made a profit in this Meslier deal. We, I didn't see the point in having 50 million pounds worth of talent on the bench for this season. So, Meslier has made the move to Valencia and we've got a little bit more money to play around with now. And that is why we have made a massive addition to our back line here. Ulrich Bain. You didn't care who I was until I put on the mask. Ulrich Bain. I'm, like, I'm never doing that again. Ulrich Bain is signed here, a regen French defender from Atletico Madrid for 92 million pounds. I was born in the darkness. You merely adopted it. Ben Godfrey's growth has also disappointed me in this rebuild, I'm not gonna lie. We're sending the Englishman on a permanent move here to David Moyes' West Ham United for 34.1 million pounds. Rico Richards has cracked the 70s, 72 rated right now. We're sending him on loan once again, though, to SC Braga. So there we go, lads. Steven Bergevin and Bean into the club. Dion Garner and Meslier and Godfrey all out of the club. It's Champions League time, boys. Let's see what the squad is shaping up like. Carlin Grant is the mover and shaker of this rebuild. 88 rated. We need him to bang in the goals this season. We need him breaking records. We need a big season, though. Certain players need some growth. I'm not going to lie. Players like Longstaff and Lewis need you to pick it up a little bit. But we are in season five. We are in the Champions League. Let's go check out our group. Okay, so it's not too bad of a group. AS Monaco and Hertha Berlin have the ability to cause some issues for us. They've got some good young players in their squads. But I think this is a group that we should see ourselves emerging from. Fingers crossed we can get out of Group B. Get ourselves some knockout round football as we're going to quick sim this first leg here. Or we're going to quick sim the uh, group stage. We're going to simulate through the group stages and see how we go in three, two, or one. Get in there, lads. Knockout round football coming to the Hawthorns here in season number five. Ourselves and Hertha Berlin out of group B. But it is a massive, massive challenge as in the round of 16... We're facing Barcelona. The goal for us every season from here on in needs to be Champions League qualification. We honestly need to start pushing for the bloody Premier League title, but that is not going to plan at the moment. We currently find ourselves in sixth position. Need to pick it up and get comfortably in that top four. Callum Morton out on a loan move once again, sending him to Nice this time. He's getting up there in terms of overall though, which is nice. I did say that Sean Longstaff's growth hasn't been as good as I expected it to. So we've decided to cut ties with the English midfielder, sending him to beautiful sunny Naples on a permanent deal. 27.2 million pounds is the transfer fee. And we have decided to sign Yangel Herrera, the Venezuelan midfielder, is joining us here for 57 million pounds from PSG. Herrera in, long staff out. That's a huge upgrade to the midfield. Hopefully it's enough to get us deep in the Champions League, get us past Barcelona first and foremost, and get us back into that top four. Let's crack on, lads. Barcelona, Champions League knockout rounds. Come on. Here we go, fellas. It is time for the first leg. We are on the road here, grabbing our passports, heading to the Catalonian region as we take on Barcelona at the Camp Nou. It's a huge challenge. Away goals are what we need. We're going to quick simulate this first leg against Barcelona and the scoreline. It's a 3-1 it's a loss. I mean, we've got an away goal on the board, yeah, but 3-1 down is tough to get out of. We're going to have to do some big work here in the second leg. Come on, West Brom. We are at home. It is our first taste of Champions League knockout football at the Hawthorns. We're 3-1 down. A 2-0 win, whilst ambitious, would get us through to the knockout rounds or through to the quarterfinals. But that is definitely easier said than done. Just going to quick simulate it here and leave it all on the line. The scoreline against Barcelona is a 2-1 loss. We're out of the Champions League in the round of 16 quite comfortably. Here we are at the end of season number five. And we, lads, we've snuck into the prey to the uh, top four. We have snuck into Champions League football again for season number six. What a disappointing season. Liverpool win another Premier League title. We finish fourth. But we need to be higher than that, man. But at least we're not Blackburn, Fulham, or Leeds, who have all been relegated. Unfortunately, we lost the Community Shield to Liverpool 3-2 at the start of the season. And we were unable to go back-to-back -back in the FA Cup as Arsenal won that. We have, however, 
lost the Carabao Cup final on penalties to Man United. What is it with all these cup competitions and going to penalties? A little bit of a consolation. We lost to the runners-up. Barcelona losing to Real Madrid in the Champions League final. AS Monaco, our group stage companions, have taken down Wolves to win the Europa League. And the stats just continue to be impressive here for Carlin Grant, who has cracked the 90s. A man that started with 81 potential is now 27 years of age. 90 overall, that is unreal. But yeah, very much disappointing season here in season number five at West Brom. Need to pick it up next season and do just do so much better all around. I want a Champions League title this season, lads. We need to do better than the bloody round of 16. We've gone out and signed a big player. It is the Tottenham defender, Sergio Rajulion here. The Spaniard joining us for 85 million pounds. Have also decided to make an upgrade to the defense to Premier League proven defender, Ruben Diaz. He's actually coming across though from Barcelona, the side that beat us last year. If you can't beat him, join him. Or in our case, steal from them. But there we go, lads. Two additions to the defense, spending the big bucks where it counts. Rajulion and Diaz into the club. Hopefully they can be a big difference for us here in season seven. This is what the team looks like at the moment. I definitely need to get the morale of the side a little bit higher. Also need players like Doan and Yunel to grow a little bit more. But for the most part, I'm very happy with this growth so far. Carlin Grant, 91 rated, which is absolutely cooked. But anyways, we're in the Champions League again. Let's go look at our group. Very, very similar group to last year. AC Milan obviously can cause us a lot of problems. Frankfurt could be a little bit of an upset, a little bit of a wild card, but it's still a group that I expect to get out of. There we go, lads. We have absolutely wiped the floor with the group ourselves and AC Milan comfortably out of Group H, and we are back to the Champions League round of 16. Let's see who we're facing. Hopefully, not Barcelona again. In the round of 16 this season, we have been drawn up against Borussia Dortmund. Barcelona got our other group mates, AC Milan, but we have been drawn up against Borussia Dortmund here in the Champions League round of 16. What is going on with us and not getting close to the top four? We're five points out of the top four, which I know is close, but still, we're seventh halfway through this season. Well, on the 1st of January, Newcastle, Newcastle United are somehow second. They're doing their own rebuild of their own, but... We are seventh. We need to get that sorted ASAP, lad. Didn't have any money to really spend, nor were there players that I really wanted to sell in this January transfer window. It's a... I don't, I don't know, lads. I don't know if... We're, I don't know what to expect from these knockout rounds. I mean, we wiped the floor in the group stages. We're just going to have to see if we're good enough to get ourselves through the groups or through the knockout rounds and into a Champions League final. Come on, West Brom. Will season six... Of the season. It is time for our first knockout round fixture here. We are away at the world famous Signal Aduna Park in front of the yellow wall. Need to get ourselves some away goals on the board and get ourselves a big result headed into the second leg at the Hawthorns. As we quick sim, the first leg, the scoreline is a 2 1 loss. I mean, it's an away goal on the board. Sweet. But two goals. We're down. We need to win this second leg at home. Now, 1-0 win would get us through, but still, needed, needed a little bit more comfortable. All right, lads, it is time for this second leg. I'm nervous. I'm a little bit worried. If we go out in the Champions League in the round of 16 for a second successive year, I will be filthy. We're going to jump in to this second leg here in Quick Simulated at the Hawthorns, and the scoreline is a 1-0 win. Let's go, Hawthorne. Hawthorne, let's go Hawthorne. I'm wearing a bloody Sydney Swans shirt. I'm saying, let's go Hawthorne. Let's go West Brom. We go through to the Champions League quarters on away goals rule. Oh, well, here we go, <laughs> fellas. Here we go. Champions League quarterfinals. And we get a chance at revenge as we have Barcelona. They are the side that eliminated us in the quarterfinals or the semi round of 16, I should say, last season. But now... We have Barcelona in the quarterfinals. Once again, the first leg is at the Camp Nou. I believe last year it was a 3-1 win for Barcelona. We're going to jump into it. Quick sim it. And the scoreline this year is the same as the Dortmund first leg. It is a 2-1 advantage to Barcelona. We know the situation. 
We know what we need to do now in this second leg. Let's take down Barcelona and get ourselves into the semifinals. This is a series defining moment. 2-1 down, Champions League quarterfinals, the side that eliminated us last season, Barcelona. We need a big result here if we're going to get ourselves through the semifinals. We're going to quick sim it here against the Catalonian side. And the scoreline. What the? It's a 3-2 win, but we're out. They go through an away goals rule. Bloody hell. I thought Doan might have won it for us there in the 120th minute. But we have gone and become eliminated on away goals rule to Barcelona. That would have been insane. Thank the bloody Lord, we have finished up in a top four position here in season number six, lads. 75 points. Liverpool wiping the floor again. It's becoming a domination here by the Reds, but we have finished third in the Premier League. Newcastle United, hang on, and are going to be playing Champions League football with us next season, but we get our third shot at the Champions League in season seven. Derby County, they absolutely suck. 11 points. They've been relegated alongside Burnley and West Ham. It's a second FA Cup in the Mr. Rebuild era at West Brom as we take down Man City to win the FA Cup quite comfortably. We've done the double, lads. It is a Carabao Cup as well, taking down Man United and winning the Carabao Cup. Liverpool did go on and stop Barcelona from winning the Champions League this season. And Lazio defeat Bilbao to win the Europa League. Carlin Grant, you are an absolute madman. 40 goals for the Englishman, 93 overall. That is insane. So the fact that we won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup is definitely a redeeming factor about this sixth season at West Brom, but I'm honestly disappointed. We made it to the quarters and we've been eliminated. I thought for sure we would have completed the rebuild by season six, but we're going to grit our teeth and keep moving as we have Champions League football once again in season seven at West Brom. All right, lads, we're going to have to do something drastic here if we want to get over the hurdle, which is Barcelona and those other big clubs. So, we have decided to sign Federico Valverde, 89 rated from Juventus for 102 million pounds. Also need to fill out the bench as well because we really have not that many great rotation players, but it is Oscar Miendo joining us here from Sevilla for 33 million. And the Danish wonder kid, well, former wonder kid at this point, Kasper Dolberg joining us from Leicester City for 34.2 million pounds. I was trying to get Meslier back into the club, but we have decided to sign Alban Lafont as a backup goalkeeper here, 39 million pounds from Wolfsburg. So there we go, lads. One player for the starting 11, and then three players for the bench, the squad. I'll show it to you in a second, but the squad is going to be absolutely just stacked. I mean, look at that. The only area that really worries me is Doan. 86 rated, and I mean, 86 rated is still bloody strong. We just need to make sure we have no injuries, no suspensions, and hopefully have a big season. Carlin Grant... 94 rated. Wouldn't mind if he got up to like a 96, 97. That would be that'd be pretty neat. Again, not too sure what to make of this Champions League group. Honestly, pretty happy that we went out and got Federico Valverde, considering we have Juventus in the Champions League group stages. But we got Juve, Porto, Victoria Plisson. Let's see if we can get back to the knockout rounds for a third successive season. Three years, three times we have topped our group, top of Group B. Juve coming through, only just though. Porto, decent showing from them as well. And Victoria Pleasant, basically a forfeit every time they play somebody. <laughs> the FIFA gods do not want us to have an easy time, do they? Bayern Munich in the Champions League round of 16. Come on. The good thing, however, we are currently top of the Premier League. I mean, it is so damn close though. Only six points between ourselves and sixth place Liverpool, so... You're going to have to keep it up here in the second half of the season, but it's a positive start. Have also decided not to do any business here in the transfer window again. Spent majority of the money in the opening window, knew what we needed to do, went out and did it. Honestly, I would have liked to maybe get another right back or a centre midfielder into the squad, but it is what it is. I like the squad we've got. Hopefully, it's enough to go all the way. Champions League round of 16 for the third successive season. We got past... Uh, Borussia Dortmund, I believe it was, last season. We're going to head to Germany again for the first leg here. 
traveling to Munich, the Allianz Arena. Funnily enough, this time last year, I was in I was in Munich watching Bayern Munich versus Paderborn before the world decided to go crazy and the head and everything just turned upside down. But we're going to simulate this first leg here against Bayern Munich. And the scoreline is going to be a two-all draw. Okay, we have two away goals on the board, which is nice to see. Hopefully, it's enough. And hopefully we can get past them in the second leg at the Hawthorns. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. We need a clean sheet. A clean sheet gets us through to the quarterfinals. Big confidence booster if we can somehow get by, past Bayern Munich here. The second leg at the Hawthorns. Quick simmed. And the scoreline is a 2-1 win. Let's go. Come on. That's a big win. Big, big win. Didn't have to rely on away goals rule. We go through 4-3 on aggregate. Come on. Here we go. We've never made it past the quarterfinals here with West Bromwich Albion. We faltered here against Barcelona last year. Barcelona are taking on Newcastle, which is funny enough. I would laugh so hard if it ended up being us versus Newcastle in the Champions League final. But we're facing AC Milan here at the quarterfinals. Need to cake it one step at a time and get ourselves through to the semis. Come on, lads. We've been blessed in the entirety of this rebuild in having away legs first. But again, we need to get away goals on the board here as we are taking on AC Milan at the San Siro. The first leg is going to end up as a 1-0 win. Okay, nice, nice, nice. We get an away goal on the board there with Bergevin. Let's keep it going. Come on, West Brom. Come on. All right, lads. Time for the second leg here at home at the Hawthorns. It's narrow, but we have the advantage. We have the advantage. We have an away goal. It's only a narrow away goal lead, but come on. Can we get past the quarterfinals and into the semifinals? We simulate it. The score is a 4-2 win. Let's go. We're through to the semis. Come on, lads. Come on. Here we go. Atletico Madrid versus West Brom. The Champions League semifinals. Come on, lads. On the road once again. Headed to the Wonder Metropolitano, whatever the bloody hell it's called. But we need away goals on the board to give us a good advantage here. Headed into the second leg. It's a massive challenge. Al Felix is going to be an absolute beast at the moment. Come on, West Brom. The scoreline after the first leg is going to be a 3-0 win. Holy dooly. Okay. We're in a very good spot. Come on. Oh, my fucking... I swear, if we bottle it from this point, lads, we better not bottle it. All we need is to just get through to the Champions League final. We are 3-0 up here. Surely not. Surely we're not going to bottle it. I'm going to quick sim it. Our fate is in the hands of FIFA. And we're headed to a Champions League final. Come on, West Brom. Let's go. Let's go. 4-1 on aggregate. Come on. It just had to. It just had to be this way. In Season 5, they eliminated us in the round of 16. In Season 6, they eliminated us in the quarterfinals. And now here we are in Season 7. And we are facing Barcelona in the Champions League final. Final. Taking a look around at the other competitions, PSG emerged as the Europa League winners. We have edged out Manchester City and have become Premier League champions with West Bromwich Albion. Let's go. Sheffield United, Watford and Birmingham City have all been relegated, however. We've won the Community Shield and taken down Liverpool 4-1. We could not win the FA Cup, though. That's gone to Man City. And Manchester City also won the Carabao Cup. But, lads, here we go. Taking a look at the squad report here in season number seven. Honestly, when I started this rebuild, I did not expect to be still going season seven. But... This team we have built has been insane. Some players, I mean, Carlin Grant, what a freak of nature he has been for us in this rebuild. So happy with this team so far. So happy with this bench. If we do happen to lose to Barcelona tonight, though, we're going to have to make some big changes just due to the fact we've got some aging players in this squad. So it's the last chance for a few players. The squad is at its prime. We need to deliver, though, as it is Barcelona versus West Bromwich Albion, the Champions League final. Let's go, lads. Come on.
There is nobody I'd rather be facing in the final. Barcelona versus West Brom. Let's get this title to the Midlands. Barcelona. Just defending here. Concert coming in because Maitland Niles is suspended. They're pushing up though. Gotta watch these runs. They go through. What's that bloody deflection? They've gone through! Good save, you nice Simon. That deflection was ridiculous though. Here we go. Would be nice to hit him on the counter attack. You now, you now, over, over, Madison, back post. What is that header? Win it. Oh, we should have taken the lead there. Corner here for us. Come on, Bergevine. Swinging this one in. Grant, Grant. Oh my God. How unlucky are we? Come on, get this one into the area. Dolan, swinging this one in. Grant, again, punched away from Stegen. Madison. Come on, Madison. Good touch. Good shot. Oh, save from De Stegen. We need the breakthrough, lads. Goal before half time would go down. An absolute treat, honestly. That's a belter of ball out to Dolan here. Dolan holding it up. Looking for support. Goes there. Finish. Oh, you need to do better than that, Jared, honestly. We do have the corner out of it, though, lads. I'm trying something a little bit spectacular here. Dolan in. Madison. Long shot. Oh, my God. I thought that one was in there for a second. Barcelona on the attack early here. Got to keep our shape defensively. Do you see those runs? Martial gone there. Milinkovic Savic. Just defending. Just jockeying. Not giving them any silly looks here. They go back. Milinkovic Savic. Going through. Good. No, I thought we made the tackle there. They get the shot. I would have been filthy. Grant to Madison. Lunging all around here, to be fair. Consa, we got lucky there with the bounce. We got a little... Oh, Grant, get it through! Get it through! Through Madison! 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 I probably should have squared that one in hindsight. Fuck! Yes, good tackle, Madison. Come on, lads. Come on, I need to slide somebody through. That's a great run there from you now. Going back, though. Going back. Bergevine. Bergevine, we're going to do the fake shot there. Go! Finesse! Bergevine! Steven Bergevine, the 80th minute! We have the lead! Got to defend here. One minute. Barcelona need to get the ball up. If we stop them here, we've won the Champions League. Yes, force them into a pass. Come on, blow that whistle, referee! There it is! We have completed this rebuild with West Brom. Oh, that was stressful. What a stressful rebuild it was, lads. But... If you enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video. This has been a grind of a rebuild. Scorpion kick that subscribe button if you do around here. Oh, I'll let you enjoy these title celebrations. It's been Jared HD here. I'm out. Hey.